Hello, my name's Roy and welcome to another episode of the Astronomy Network. And this one we'll be talking about choosing your very first telescope. So in our first episode, a lot of the products mentioned there were aimed at professionals and astrophotographers, so we thought we would make a video for the beginners. There are lots of videos on YouTube about choosing your first telescope and what to buy, so I thought I would give my take on it and what I thought would be a good choice for a beginner. Now I'm going to assume that anyone watching this video knows absolutely nothing about telescopes, so I'm going to go over all the basics from what the telescope is, how it works, the difference between a reflector and a refractor, the difference between an altazimuth mount versus an equatorial mount, and go over all the accessories and what to look for when buying your first scope. So before we look at the telescopes themselves, I thought I would mention what I think is important when you're choosing your scope. Number one is obviously your budget. Number two is what do you want to see? Do you want to look at planets, the moon, nebula? And number three is who's using it? Is it yourself? Is it for a child? Now, when you're looking at the specs of the telescopes, there are three things which I think are very important. Number one being the aperture of the scope. Number two is the focal length. And number three will be the type of mount and tripod that the telescope telescope sits on. So we're going to get up close with some telescopes now. I've got these two behind me to use as examples, both from Skywatcher. We've got a refractor on a altazimuth mount and a reflector on an equatorial mount. So one thing we get asked all the time is what is the difference between a reflector and a refractor? Now the difference is quite simple. One is a glass lens and one contains a mirror. Now the refractor the light comes in through the front, it travels all the way down through the scope in one direction and is focused to a point at the back, which is where you focus it to your eye. Now with a reflector, light still comes in through the front, but it passes down the scope, is reflected back by what's called your primary mirror, and then it is reflected again by the secondary mirror to your eye, which you just pop the eyepiece in there and it comes out the side. Now what that means is when you're using it, is with a refractor, you look down and up through the telescope, whereas with a reflector, you're looking in from the side and you're looking down at a reflected image. Another thing to bear in mind when choosing a refractor or a reflector is how much maintenance you're prepared to do. With a refractor, they're pretty much maintenance free. They're a sealed lens, there's no reason to collimate it, there's, all you need to do is keep it clean. Whereas with the reflector, the mirrors can move slightly so you will need to collimate it periodically. Now, I'm not going to go over collimation in this video, I'll save that for another one. But that's one thing to bear in mind if you are choosing a reflector, is that you will need to collimate it at some point. So next we have the types of mounts. There are two main types. There's the AZ and the EQ. But the AZ is short for altazimuth and the EQ is short for equatorial. So starting with the altazimuth, these are very simple. They just move up, down, left and right in altitude and azimuth. So when you're looking for an object in the sky, you simply just move it around and scan the sky like that. Whereas with the equatorial, they move in a different way. They move in what's called right ascension or RA and deck or declination. So your RA is this movement here and your declination is your left and right, which is this movement here. Now what that actually means is when you're following an object, you do it in different ways. With the altazimuth mount, if you're trying to say follow a planet, if you're looking at Jupiter, you're gonna to need to follow it across the sky as it moves. You're going to need to do that in two steps with the altazimuth. You're gonna to have to go across and up cross and up a little bit like that as it moves around the sky. Now with the equatorial mount, once you have set it up, you actually only need to follow it with the right ascension. So you move your declination to find the object. Once you've found it, you move the RA and it will follow it across the sky in one movement. Now one thing to bear in mind when choosing one of these two mounts is how easy they are to set up. The altazimuth is by far the easier one to use. You simply just extend your tripod legs you pop your telescope on top and you're pretty much good to go. So they're very good for children, they're very good for beginners because there's no complicated setup. Now with an equatorial mount, there is a little bit more involved. For a start, you need to set up your counterweights and you also need to do something called a polar alignment. Now I'm not gonna get into all the ins and outs of how to set up an equatorial mount because that'll be a whole nother video. But there's one thing to bear in mind that if you are buying this type of scope on this mount, then it's going to maybe better for, say, a teenager or an adult because there, there is a little bit more setup involved. Oh, 
Okay, so moving on, we're now going to get into some of the terminology surrounding telescopes and the main ones are aperture and focal length. Now in my opinion, these two things are what are going to be very important when choosing your scope. Now the aperture, put simply, is the diameter of the actual telescope. If you look at the reflector here, if you were to measure the mirror at the back, it's 130 millimeters in aperture. Now if you look at this refractor, if you were to measure the front of this lens, this one's only 60 millimeters in aperture. Now what that actually means, obviously, is that this is a bigger scope, it's a wider scope, it's gonna get a lot more light in. Now more light, it means more resolution, you will see more objects, and you will get better definition overall. So by having that bigger aperture, you've got a better chance of seeing more objects in the sky, which is what it's all about. So what I would say, above all else, when choosing your first telescope, try and go for as big an aperture as possible. So it's not all about aperture, you also want to consider something else, and that is focal length. Now the focal length determines how much magnification you're going to get out of the telescope. Now focal length is measured from the main optic to the point at which the light is focused. And the longer that focal length, the more power you've got. More power means more magnification. Now that's important if you're, say, wanting to look at planets, because you need quite a long focal length for the planets. Whereas if you're wanting to look at, say, in a wider area of the sky, something like Andromeda or Orion Nebula, then you'll want a shorter focal length. Now these two scopes are actually quite similar in focal length. This one's 650mm and this one is 700mm. So you're not going to notice a massive difference in the amount of magnification between them. However, because this has the bigger aperture, like what I mentioned before, you will get a brighter image at that same magnification. So both reflectors and refractors come in various different focal lengths. Now this particular telescope is called the Explorer 130P and it has a 650mm focal length. But you can also purchase this with a 900mm focal length and that's called the Explorer 130EQ2 and the Explorer 130M. And I'll be getting onto those a little bit later on. And finally, the magnification of your telescope isn't just determined by your focal length, it also depends on what eyepiece you're using. So now I'm going to talk about what accessories come with your telescope and what I would recommend you upgrade or maybe add on in the future. Now pretty much every telescope package, most beginner packages, will always come with at least two eyepieces. One will be a 10mm and the other will be a 20mm. Now on some packages you'll also get a Barlow lens as well. In the box you'll also get a finder scope. Now this one is a optical finder but sometimes you'll get a red dot. And you'll also get a diagonal if you buy a refractor. But on the reflector you don't get a diagonal because they're not needed. So I would pay close attention to the eyepieces because that is going to determine how much magnification you're going to get. Now to work out the magnification you take the focal length and divide that by the focal length of the eyepiece. Now if we look at the reflector which was 650mm, if you divide that by 10mm that gives you the magnification which is 65 times. So if you were to then put in the 20mm, that's going to get you a lot lower power. It's going to be just over 32 times magnification. So what that means is you can purchase eyepieces at a later date to get more or less magnification. Now what I would probably recommend is upgrading the 10mm, maybe going for something with a bit more magnification, something around 5 or 6mm. And maybe the other end of the spectrum, maybe you want to you know, get a really wide angle view of the sky, so maybe look at something like a 32mm. Now there's going to be some recommendations on the screen now if you want to have a look at those, and there'll also be links below. Also, if you're going for a refracting lens, I would also consider changing the diagonal that comes with it. Now there's nothing wrong with what comes in the box, but everything's going to be inverted with a standard diagonal. What you want to look for is maybe an erecting prism, and that's going to be on the screen now. Now what an erecting prism does, it corrects the image so if you're using it for daytime use everything's going to be the right way around so yeah i would highly recommend looking at one of those as well so that pretty much covers what comes with your scope but there are a few things we would recommend for a first time buyer one of those is a moon filter now these are very inexpensive they only cost 10 pounds and what it does it reduces light when looking at bright objects so very simply they so just screw it onto the bottom of one of the eyepieces and what it does, it reduces light. If you're looking at the moon, it's gonna get rid of the glare. It's not gonna be uncomfortable to view and you'll see a lot more detail. You can also use these on planets as well, uh, especially on Jupiter, it's very, very bright a lot of the times. So that will reduce the light there as well. Another thing is we do something called a Collins Planisphere. Now these are very popular for beginner packages. What it does, it will tell you what constellations are visible each night. 
and you rotate it, it's got all the dates, it's basically like a calendar. Uh, so yeah, we would recommend those as well. There'll be links below to both of these, so if you want to check those out, you can find them there. So that pretty much covers all the basics from different lenses to different mounts and all the accessories that come with them. So now I want to talk about what telescopes are available and what I would recommend when buying your first scope. So this telescope I've been using as an example is called the Mercury 607. It's made by Skywatcher. Now I highly recommend this one if you're buying for a child or anyone who's just starting out really. You know, it's not too much money. This entire package costs £79 and that comes with everything. It comes with all those accessories I mentioned, your scope and your tripod. So for the money, it's absolutely fantastic. You can also get a 70mm version as well. So if you're looking for a bit brighter aperture, it might be worth looking at the uh, 70mm version as well. And that can be picked up on our website for £109. Now, all the links will be below. So if you want to read all the specifications and information, you can follow that link there. Now, moving on to the reflectors, in my opinion, the Skywatch Explorer 130s are pretty much the best bang for your buck. You know, you get such a big aperture for your money. There's not much else on the market where you get such a big aperture and such a stable and smooth mount for that sort of price. Now, the one I would normally recommend is the Explorer 130M. It's the 900mm version of this one, and it also comes with a motor drive. So when you're moving your mount, rather than having to move it manually, you actually control it with motor. Now, again, that should be on the screen now. Links will be below, so if you want to read all the specifications, you can do. Now, I've only scratched the surface on the types of beginner scopes available. These are just two examples. Another good range that we recommend are the Skywatcher Dobsonians. They're very popular at the moment. And also, maybe look at some of the go-to telescopes. Now, I'll probably be making another video specifically on the go-tos, because they are a little bit more in-depth. There will also be a link below taking you to all of our beginner telescopes, so you can see the full range on there. If you've got any questions or you need any advice about any of the beginner scopes I've mentioned, you can give us a call, you can talk to me directly, and I can go over everything that I've told you on this video and answer any questions you've got. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope from this you've got a better understanding of the differences between the telescope types and how they work. Now I'm sure you've got hundreds of questions about buying your first scope, so if you have any questions you can ring us or you can leave some comments below and we'll try our best to answer so that's me signing off and i will see you on the next one bye for now